welcome back to another Construct video and in this video we're looking at recreating Pokemon inside the Construct Freak engine. Now in the last video we created this world map but now we want a player who can actually explore and move around this map. So we'll start by right clicking, insert new object and find a sprite. I'm going to call this player. Now for our player we're going to make use of a sprite sheet so we're going to go right to the bottom, right click and import frames from strip. Now the sprite sheet that you need today will be available in the description and it is for horizontal cells by four vertical. Once you've got it in here, you'll now have 15 different sprites or 16 I should say, four for running left, four for running right, up and down. So let's start creating these animations. So the first one we're going to do is run down. We're then going to duplicate this and we're going to rename this run lefts, duplicate for run rights, and one more for run up. Now that they're done, we need to change these animations to work for those different directions. So for running down, I'm going to get rid of all the sprites except from the first four. For run left, I'm going to do the same, but I'm going to get rid of the first four and keep the next four. And keep going through it until I've done them all. So now that they're done, one more thing we have to do is just click on each animation and add the loop. This means it will keep cycling through those animations as we're running in these four different directions. Now they're done, we've only done half the battle, we now need to add some idle animations. So for each one we're going to duplicate it, rename it to idle and then the direction so this first one is down and remove everything but the first frame. These will act as idle animations, so when we're not running in any direction, we just stand in this pose. So, if you've done everything, you should have 8 animations, 4 run animations, which should have 4 frames each, and 4 idle animations. Making sure we keep the same naming convention for each one, especially for our idle animations. Hit the X once we're done. And our player is now in the world. Now our player is a little bit big, you'll see he takes up the full size of a Pokemon Center almost. We want to scale him down, so just on this left hand side here, change the size from 64 to 16 by 16. Much better size. We can actually change some other properties, so instead of starting by running down, we're going to change this to idle down. And then we're going to add two behaviors. So the first behavior is going to be scroll to, so the camera now follows our player. And the second behavior is going to be tile movement. Now tile movement is a little bit like eight directions, but it will make sure that the character moves on a grid at all times. And because our world is on a grid anyway, it makes perfect sense. So the grid by default is got a width of 32 by 32. We're going to change this to 16 by 16. We're also going to change the speed to 50 by 50. So he moves a little bit slower around the map. Now we can do our first test of this, but there's going to be a couple of issues that are going to arise straight away. So the first issue is our camera is zoomed really, really far out. Now this is an issue that we've got because of our battle system. The viewport height and width cannot be changed inside of runtime. So whatever we choose to be the height and width of our viewport size, we are a little bit stuck with. Now this does not mean that our whole battle system is broken or that we need to change anything with our battle system but instead we can make use of an option inside of Construct Freeze Code. So I'm going on to Event Sheet 2, and we can actually zoom in the camera. So System, and on Start of Layout, and once this layout starts, we're just going to simply take the System action, and we can scale this to so Set Layout Scale, and we want this four times the size. Now when we test it, our player fits into the world much more naturally. The other issue we've got is one, the animations aren't playing, but you'll notice that we're not lining up with the rest of the sprites that we've got. So I can't get in this store. And that's because of the way that tile maps are handled versus how sprites are handled. So with a sprite, we take the center point, and that is the one that we base all of where the sprite is off. With a tile map, we take the top left corner. Easy fix for this is add a grid offset of eight by eight, so half the tile size. This means now that we are lined up with the rest of the tiles on the map. And when I get to the front of the Pokemon Center door, 
I'm in the right place for it. Let's start adding our animations and get this looking a bit more natural now. So in event sheet two, we're gonna add a new action and we're gonna make use of our keyboard first of all. We're gonna check if key is down and we'll start with the down key. We're also gonna add a second condition and this is gonna be on our player. I'm gonna use this one to say is moving in direction and this is gonna be down also. And we're gonna turn this into an all block by right clicking on the sides and then all block. Now this bottom one is the best one by far. If you only use the down action, what happens is there's a delay between animations. What we need the down key for, however, is if we're against the block, such as solid object, it means that our player will face that way regardless, even if they can't move to that block. So that's why we've got this all block set up here. So what do we want to do? Well, we're going to do two things. The first one requires a global variable. And this is going to be a global variable called facing, and it's going to be a string. And default value is going to be down. So first thing I'm going to do is anytime we press any key, we're going to set the value of facing, and it's going to be set to that direction inside of speech marks. So we'll say that we're facing down. We're also going to take our player, set animation, and when you're setting animations, what I recommend is hit backspace and then do new sets of speech marks. This will show you all your animations. We want run down. So that's it done. Now we can move downwards and we'll run in that direction. It's just now a case of copy and paste four more times and change it for the other ones. Okay, so that's all of them done. So just make sure you are checking that the keys both stay down, the facing says down, and the animation sets down, and then left, right, and up. So four things we have to change for each row. So now we can move in all four directions, but we just want to handle what happens if we're not moving. So this is simply is just adding one more event. So let's add a new event. Scroll down, and we we'll go to our player. And there's one called is moving. Now we don't want to check if we're moving, we want to invert that to is not moving. And if that's the case, we're going to just set the player's animation. Now some of you might be wondering why have we got this variable called facing? Well, it's actually for this bit now. So we're going to use idle, then the and sign and facing. And what this will do, it will take the current direction we're facing, add the word idle, and that'll be our animation done. This means we only need one line of code as opposed to another four. If your code's not working, you just need to check that these are named correctly. So the word idle and then a capital letter for the different directions. And that's it in terms of the code that we need today. So let's do a test. Now if we move around, we can move one tile at a time to our different places around the map and it feels like we're moving. If we let go, we stop and one thing that's slightly different with this system compared to the actual Pokemon game is you do move at least one tile at a time. You can't move on the spot, which is not the end of the world. Now, final thing we need to do is just handle collision because we've not got any collision on, and this is really, really simple to do, so I'm going to add it into this video. So we're going to take our world map, and we're going to edit behaviors and add the solid behavior. What this will do is this will add the solid behavior onto every single tile which now means our whole map is solid and the game's unplayable. Easy fix, we're just going to take our little symbol here, drag over, right click, and disable selected tile collisions. This means these have no collisions on anymore. If you haven't got your tile map pane as well, just go menu, view, bars, and tile map bar. So they're disabled, we can now do the same for the buildings and trees. Again, right click, edit behaviors, and add the solid behavior. And then for this one, it's just a case of taking off any that we don't want the solid collision on. Now for mine, I only added from three buildings, so I'm just gonna find those buildings again. And what I want to do is take the select tool, click on the doors, right click, and disable for selected tiles. I'm gonna do it for the Pokemon Center. And finally, I'm gonna do it for this other building that I've got in my world. And that's it, those 
particular tiles don't have collision on anymore, which means I can walk in those buildings. So let's have a look and see what that looks like. So first of all, I walk up and now I can't go in the water, not without Seth. And if I go to any of the buildings, I can step into the door and that's about it. And later on, we'll make it so when they do step into the doors, instead of them just standing there, they'll actually go inside the building and we can manage that as well quite easily with a few lines of coat. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Our game's starting to come along now. Now we can move around the overworld. We've got a battle system. I think next video our aim is to make it so we can have wild grass and we can actually start entering into some battles. But if you've enjoyed this video, please consider and give it a like, subscribe to the channel for more construct videos, and I'll see you in the next video.